Yeah, it would seem to me that as someone, say, on a university campus who gets a whiff of socialism would say, look, there's incredible inequality in the world. There are very rich people. There are very poor people. This seems unfair. Socialism is about making it fair. And they might even say, look, even when you read the book of Acts, isn't it funny how it's always the atheists who quote the Bible before the Christian (laughs) when they're trying to make an unchristian doctrine. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Right. And they would say, gee, that sounds a lot like socialism. How could this how could this be a problem? Let's just implement this on a nationwide level and called a Christian nation. What's the problem with that? Three problems with that. One is Christian <laughs> with Marx, which Marx rejected. I love that you're like, it's, three problems, yeah. like you haven't right, been asked yeah, this yeah, before. Yeah. I gotta, yeah. uh, right? <laughs> it, it, it believes in God, which Marx rejected. He was an atheist. It talks about selling your possessions. How can you sell your possessions if you don't have private property to begin with? Very good. Yeah. These people are voluntarily on their own for That's the purposes right. of the church, the good of Christianity, very voluntarily giving of right. themselves and being willing to share their property. Communism is a state-run regime by fiat and the power of the state by gun and gulag, forcibly taking money and possessions from everybody, regardless of whether or not they want to do it. And in the name of materialistic atheism, of all things. So it's got nothing to do with that. So you get all the time these kind of you know soft-headed, silly Religious left Christians will say, wow, the Communist Manifesto talks about sharing, and so does the Bible. It's just like the Bible, you know? No, I mean, just because there's one or two elements of commonality in something mm-hmm. doesn't mean, no, they rejected the Bible. Mark said, said Christianity preaches cowardice. It, it, it preaches sacrifice. It preaches humiliation. He said um, of Judaism, the Israelite faith is repulsive to me. Communism begins where atheism begins. Where, Mark where was said. that quote from? Which one? Uh, communism begins where atheism communism begins. Communism begins where atheism begins. It, it was. It's a quote that that's originally written in French. In fact. Fulton Sheen uses that in Communism and the Conscience of the West, mm. Fulton Sheen's 1948 book. Who said that uh, like Christianity or religion is like necrophilia? Was that Lenin? That was Lenin, yeah. And f- what, so, What was the context of that? What did he mean by yeah, that? Yeah, Lenin said, there is nothing more abominable than religion. All worship of a divinity is a necrophilia. He said, religion is a kind of medieval mildew, a spiritual booze. It is the opiate of the masses. It was Lenin and who said it. Lenin, Lenin said masses, that, but yeah. Lenin quoting Marx. See, Lenin said, like bit. Marx said, it's the opiate of the masses. And if you look at Marx's actual opiate of the masses essay, um, he, he says in there, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, the soul of soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. So sometimes you'll hear people on our side say, well, I can see what Marx meant. I mean, religion and opium of the people, I mean, it's kind of like a drug, like a crutch. You know, you, you know, as Christians, we believe it's a proper one, a real one, mm-hmm. right? It's not like a placebo. So I see what he's getting. But if you read the whole context, right? No, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world, the soul of soulless conditions. It is the opiate of the masses. And he says in, in, that, in that essay as well, and this is kind of, profound i'll give marx credit on this one marx said the criticism of religion is the beginning of all criticism and what what does that mean so if you want to really begin all criticism and criticize everything else you got to do it from the root and this is it yeah exactly right you got to go after god which is why they were hell-bent on going after religion the only word that marx uses more than criticism is abolition and those words are all through that opiate of the masses essay. So he got that right. You know, they knew that if you wanted to burn down the village and start all over, you had to take out take out God. Because this this is first and foremost um, a manifesto or an attack on human nature. Hmm. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, John Paul the Second, popes all the way back to Pope Pius the Ninth said, um, especially. Benedict and JP too. They said where Marxism really failed isn't even so much philosophical, isn't so much economic, Mm, it's anthropological. anthropological. They fail to understand human nature. Such as if 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 your beginning point is that the entire communist program may be summed up in the single sentence, abolition of private property? I mean, 
think about that. <laughs> what, what what does that mean? Now, you're in a classroom where some German guy is writing this on the board. Uh, professor, can you stop for a second? A- 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 abolition of private property. <laughs> Quick question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what does that mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, the Ten Commandments: you know, "Thou shalt not steal" implies the right to own property. Natural law talks about private property. Uh, from the cave to the courthouse, a Judeo-Christian tradition, it, you have the right to property. If you're going to try to abolish all private property, I can tell you right now, I mean, a five-year-old walking in here with one of those little propeller hats and a lollipop could you know, tell you they're going to have to kill 100 million people if they want to abolish private property. I mean, you're going to have a war on your hands. So bad starting point right there. In the Republic, when they try to figure out what justice is, they talk about seeing it, I think, at a larger level. Uh, I want to do something similar here with maybe rather than thinking of the state, what would communism look like if we had a little commune? So suppose there's some uh, zombie apocalypse and everybody in here, we find um, a little uh, group of houses and we're trying to figure out how we can live peaceably together. I'm wondering, like, what does communism look like in that point? Like, do we, we all have to agree? See, that's the thing. We, we won't all agree. Sure. So someone's going to have to tell us that we're all going to agree that all right. of this is going right. to be owned collectively. Right. But And even then, a commune is not actually communism because your commune is probably something you're joining voluntarily. Right. You might have marriage and family in there. You might have religion in there. You might have religious people in there. You don't have all these various things that Marx wants to abolish but to, on see, the level of entire exactly. societies and states. No, I'm agreeing with you because what I'm saying is even in that situation, you're going to have somebody from the top down imposing those beliefs on you that they won't be religion, that they won't right. be right. marriage, presumably, that they won't be... Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the. And, and you can see how horrific that would be in that small setting. And then you just have to apply that to a nation yeah. or the world. One of the early Yankee utopians, John Humphrey Noyes, who was kicked out of New England by the Puritans, he's like the only one who was religious. He called himself a Bible communist, all right, which shows the danger of all this. He ended up forming the Oneida Colony in Oneida, New York. They make famous um, silverware. In fact, one of the only reasons that that utopian colony didn't go bankrupt is they actually had something to sell. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but but he was he was redefining marriage. Mm. They were doing group marriages. They were doing collective marriages, and they had younger girls being forced to marry older men, mm-hmm. which the younger girls didn't like. <laughs> but right, but right away they're they're trying to reinvent marriage. Yeah. So he's applying his communism on a sort of cultural level. Uh, and again, all of this is really disastrous when, when you break out of traditional relations, right? He called it the most radical rupture in traditional relations. Once you start tinkering with and taking down yeah. these ideas that have been the bulwark of human beings yeah. for thousands of years, it gets ugly. It gets messy. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you liked and if you loved, subscribe. Subscribe.